Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. Starting from this session, let us learn some important topics in hematology or hematopathology. And in this session, I will be explaining the differences between MPN versus MDS. This is a topic which is not really well understood by the undergraduate students. The concepts of which are not really understood very well. And hence, I thought of you know trying to simplify the concepts of MPN and MDS. The MPN stands for myeloproliferative neoplasms, whereas MDS stands for myelodysplastic neoplasms. Though it is called myelodysplastic neoplasm, the abbreviation is still. MDS, which was earlier referred to as myelodysplastic syndromes. So, we will, we will try to understand the differences between myeloproliferative neoplasms and myelodysplastic neoplasms by means of various pathognomonic features, starting with the pathophysiology of these two entities. Myeloproliferative neoplasms, as the name says, it is proliferative, right? Which means there is excessive proliferation of mature cells and these cells could be mature white blood cells, mature erythrocytes and or mature platelets. So, basically there is a proliferative disorder. Okay, This is a proliferative neoplasm whereas myelodysplastic syndrome which was earlier referred to as myelodysplastic syndrome, now it is myelodysplastic neoplasm. This is ineffective erythropoiesis. Okay. So, these are clonal stem cell disorder which results in ineffective hematopoiesis which means there is dysplasia. Okay. We will talk about dysplasia a little while later. There is dysplasia and apoptosis in myelodysplastic neoplasms. Remember, there should not be any dysplasia in myeloproliferative neoplasms which means they are all mature cells. Here, all the cells are immature cells. And now, what is the percentage of dysplastic cells? It's very important, right? So, criteria-wise, for dysplasia, you should see more than 10% of the cells being dysplastic in any given cell lineage. When I say in any given cell lineage, it could be more than 10% dysplastic cells in erythroid cell lineages or myeloid cell lineages or megakeratocytic cell lineages. Okay. At, least, at least one lineage, it should have dysplasia of more than 10%. Now, I hope the concept is clear right now, right? So, myeloproliferative neoplasms, they are just proliferative without dysplasia and this one, myelodysplastic neoplasms, as the name says, it is dysplastic. So can we, what, what are the disease types which comes under these two categories? Myeloproliferative neoplasms, the commoner ones which you all know are the chronic myeloid leukemia, the polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia and few more. Okay, These are the four important ones which you should know. Whereas myelodysplastic neoplasms, which I am sure you are not Many of you might have heard. Remember, this is broadly categorized into myelodysplastic neoplasms with defining genetic abnormalities. Okay, and there is a category of myelodysplastic syndrome which are morphologically defined. For example, you know, myelodysplastic syndromes with low blasts, with excess blasts, with ring blast, and many more. So, these are some of the examples of myelodysplastic neoplasms. Remember, in this session, I am not going in detail about each of these entities. I am just trying to help you in understanding the basic differences between myelodysplastic neoplasm and the myeloproliferative neoplasm. Okay. Now, there, there is another category called myelodysplastic myeloproliferative neoplasms where the features overlap. Okay, that's one more entity you need to remember. Now, what are the risk factors for myeloproliferative neoplasms? Could be radiation exposure or genetic predisposition, which is quite rare. Whereas in myelodysplastic syndrome, there is often have a prior uh, history of chemotherapy or radiation and ben and or benzene exposure. These are the various important risk factors for these two neoplasms. 
what are the common genetic mutations which you come across in myeloproliferative neoplasms cml i'm sure you all know about cml that is bcr abl gene in cml ras mutation in juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia jack2 mutation in polycythemia vera and you have pal r and or mpl mutation in essential thrombocythemia these are the common mutations we need to know or genetic abnormalities you need to know whereas in myelodysplastic neoplasms it could be 5q deletion it could be sf3b1 mutation pp53 inactivation and many more these are the three important ones so note that there are differences in genetic mutations as well in both these neoplasms when, when we talk about lineage involvement in each of these categories in myeloproliferative neoplasms usually it is one lineage affected it is predominantly single lineage affected but of course there are others other lineages can also show mild decrease for example if the myeloid lineage increases then it is chronic myelo genus leukemia if it is erythroid it is polycythemia vera like that usually single dominant lineage is affected whereas in myelodysplastic neoplasms usually more than one multiple lineages are involved simultaneously that's very important to note this is the basic difference between myeloproliferative neoplasm and myelodysplastic neoplasms the typical lineages affected for example if it is erythroid it is polycythemia vera if it is myeloid it is cml if it is megakaryocytes if it is essential it is essential thrombocythemia whereas in myelodysplastic neoplasms i told you it can be multi lineage dysplasia okay and most often it is budo bone marrow it is hypercellular but then they are all immature they die soon and then they result in cytopenias in the peripheral smear for example they manifest with anemia they manifest with neutropenia they manifest with thrombocytopenia in contrast with proliferative neoplasms where everything is increased they are all mature cells which are increased right no the peripheral blood findings as we can now easily tell now that in myeloproliferative neoplasms the peripheral blood findings are always cytosis high counts and they are all mature cells whereas in myelodysplastic neoplasms there is cytopenias which means low cell counts and by definition remember you should have dysplastic cells what are the bone marrow findings so bone marrow findings hypercellular and you know that it is effective production it is not ineffective you know hematopoiesis it is effective hematopoiesis only thing is that there is increased production because of those mutations whereas in myelodysplastic neoplasms bone marrow you have hypercellularity but then it is ineffective hematopoiesis because the cells are dysplastic and then they die by the time they reach the peripheral smear you know half of the cells would have died and that's why they manifest with cytopenias now cell maturity okay all the cells in myeloproliferative neoplasms are mature cells they are functional cells whereas in myelodysplastic syndromes they are often immature cells are dysplastic cells now it's very important to note what are the kind of dysplastic cells which you can encounter in myelodysplastic neoplasms so let us see in each lineages for example in erythroid series let us see what are all the dysplastic cells the dysplastic cells could be in the form of ring sideroblasts okay if you do iron stain you can easily see that you know a very nuclear accumulation of iron right that's ring sideroblast then it can also show megaloblastoid maturation see megaloblastoid maturation does not only occur in vitamin b12 deficiency it is also a dysplastic you know thing in myelodysplastic syndrome myelodysplastic neoplasms the cytoplasmic bridging can be seen and cytoplasmic vacuolations can be seen look at this this is erythroid series pre precursor of erythroid cell these are cytoplasmic vacuolations and intercytoplasmic bridges that is one of the important feature of dysplasia in erythroid series 
then nuclear see nuclear you know dysplastic you know in the form of it can be binucleation or it can be multinucleation you can also see nuclear budding or you can also see nuclear bridging just like you saw cytoplasmic bridging here you can see internuclear bridging okay all these are dysplastic cells so if you find more than 10% of the marrow dysplastic cells that means you might be dealing with myelodysplastic neoplasms so this is only in the erythroid series let us see what you see in myeloid series the most important one is hypogranulation okay absolutely no granules in the myeloid precursors that's a dysplastic feature bilobed cells they are pseudo pelger uh, anomaly it can be nuclear hypersegmentation just segmentation just like what you see in you know megaloblastic anemia okay it can be abnormal shapes of the nuclei it can be cytoplasmic vacuolation all these findings are dysplastic findings in the myeloid series now let us see the dysplastic findings in the megakaryocyte series normally the megakaryocyte is multi lobated right whereas in this case if it is dysplastic it shows a single nuclear lobe it can have multiple nuclei but they are separate okay and these is separate just like you see it appears like as if you know these are different uh, pawn ball kind of thing on a chess game right that's why it's also called as pawn ball megakaryocyte sometimes the nuclei can fuse together to form look like as if you know smudging and then cloud like nuclei so these are some of the important dysplastic cells in megakaryocytic lineages so just remember the criteria or the definitive criteria for myelodysplastic syndrome in dysplasia is that more than at least more than 10% of the cells should be dysplastic in either of these lineages if it is more than one lineage it is good but then at least one lineages it should have more than 10% dysplastic cells now let us see the differences in clinical presentation because of cyto you know increased cell counts they often present with thrombosis splenomegaly and hyperviscosity whereas in the case of myelodysplastic neoplasms because of anemia thrombocytopenia you know neutropenia they often present with fatigue bleeding and infections the progression risk is also important thing when you understand the differences between these two myeloproliferative neoplasms you know they usually progress to myelofibrosis the marrow become fibrous very rarely they progress to acute myeloid leukemia whereas myelodysplastic syndrome there is often a very high risk of acute myeloid leukemia transformation that's very important because that's the importance of knowing whether you are dealing with myelodysplastic neoplasm or a myeloproliferative neoplasm how do you treat these so usually because the cell counts are high you aim at cytoreductive therapy decrease the cell counts you know you can use jack inhibitors you can use phlebotomy like all these are tried in you know different kind entities whereas in myelodysplastic neoplasms it's often supportive care you know anemia manage anemia manage infections manage bleeding it's often supportive care you use hypomethylytic agents as well and stem cell transplant is the only hope for these patients now coming to the prognosis Generally, you know, uh, better as compared to the myelodysplastic neoplasm. The myeloproliferative neoplasms prognosis-wise, it is generally better. But yeah, long term, the risk do exist. It progresses to myelofibrosis. Some patients progresses to acute myeloid leukemia. Whereas myelodysplastic neoplasm, the prognosis is generally poor. especially when the myelodysplastic neoplasm is with excess blast because the risk of transformation into acute myeloid leukemia is extremely high in these cases so that's all about the differences between myeloproliferative neoplasm and myelodysplastic neoplasm okay i hope you have understood the concept one is proliferative which has mature cells another is dysplastic with ineffective erythropoiesis right these are the basic differences between myeloproliferative neoplasm and myelodysplastic neoplasm thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have anything to ask if you find this video useful do consider subscribing and please do share among your friends so that they will you know be benefited from this
in in my next video i shall be discussing one of the entities in myeloproliferative neoplasms stay tuned